This is the second week of February 2022. It is racing, Mia. I don't know if you feel that in terms of where we are today. It looks as though this year is going to be a very, very quick one. But we're still in a phase where we can get your thoughts on the themes, on what you're looking at, on changes in your investment trajectory. So right now, what is top of mind for you? For us, it's very much the same story as we've been focusing on for the last uh, more than a year. I think we've, we've uh, strategized our portfolio construction in such a way that it's something that we're really building on. The market pullback has really benefited us, especially from the end of sort of uh, August last year, where we started to implement more towards uh, assets that started to look attractive after we saw all the regulatory pullback, in the, especially in the East. So there we, we, we were able to capitalize on, on the pullbacks that we did see in some of these Chinese shares that we could get buy into. And then, of course, the renewable energy has been a big theme for us, along with infrastructure in South Africa. And I think it's topical due to the fact that it's also very much front of mind for the president, for the government, and for everyone in South Africa. Africa who wants to see the economy grow and create jobs. The stocks that you are engaging with, that you are investing in, can you give me a little more clarity on, on that side to the extent that you can share? Yes, of course. Uh, we, like I've mentioned before, we very much focus on renewable energy where we've uh, invested directly into a wind farm within the Kruger funds. We've also done work on, on the infrastructure side where we came to the market in December listing a uh, read the first read that only invests in fiber, uh, fiber optic infrastructure in the country, and we've got exposure to that. And then along with that, we still think that the mining shares in South Africa has legs. We think that there's a couple of underpinning uh, commodity prices and, and, and drivers longer term to support the exposure that we do have there. So we still have our exposure to those companies. And then on the global side, we don't think that the tech shares are going anywhere. We think that they'll remain very strong businesses. We've got our exposure there and we've also got exposure uh, to the East in selective companies. Sibanya Stillwater reports soon. We'll be obviously speaking to Neil Froneman. Is Sibanya Stillwater still at the top of the log? This is a drum that you were beating repeatedly last year. Yes, I think the, the fact is that I just, you know, I reiterated numerous times last year that uh, Sibanya does look very attractive from a price valuation. And beyond that, it's a very attractive company. The company doesn't have a lot of debt. The company is very strong in terms of cash flow. Uh, and that's just one of our mining um, holdings that we do have in the portfolio. Of course, we, we've, I've said this numerous times, we like a very broad diversification. So despite the fact that I do think Sabanya is very attractive at these levels, it's still a, as part of a very diversified, broader portfolio. 